Daniel O'Brien here, I hope you're doing well. Today I want to talk about Project Surplus where I'm going to be filming a video each week up until Christmas this year uh, talking about um, a project I'm working on here on the farm and it's called Project Surplus. I'm going to run through really quick what it's about and then I'm going to show you, we're going to go outside and I'm going to show you what's happening on the farm right now. I've got some notes so I don't sort of waffle and I don't forget about what I'm talking about. So Project Surplus, the vision statement, the mission statement, the what is Project Surplus? It is create a cost neutral farm that is full of automation and efficiency so my family and I can be self-sufficient. That's basically what I want to do. Let's break it down. So cost neutral, the reason I've done this is um, I don't want a farm that cost me $10,000 or $20,000 a year to run. And I go, man, that was like an expensive hobby. Also, on the other side, just for this project, like I love stuff that makes money. But for this project, I'm going to be selling produce, selling surplus to just cover costs. Because I see a bit of a, a, a need out there. People are homesteading and they're growing their own food, but it's costing them a lot of money to do it all because they're not um, so they're not selling anything. So they need to have an external income to be able to finance their homesteading thing. Point number two, automation and efficiency. I don't want a farm that's going to take eight hours a day. And again, I'm going to go back to and I'm sort of going to pick on some of those homesteaders where they go, yeah, we're homesteaders, we're, we're growing all of our own food. Firstly, sometimes they're paying a lot of money to, to about to be able to produce that and pay for all the stock feed and whatever. Secondly, um, that it's very labor intensive, a lot of their systems. I've seen them, seen them on YouTube and I go, man, if you give me sort of a weekend at your farm, I'd just be putting automation and efficiency everywhere. Um, so for what I'm doing, I wanna make it cost neutral. So I will be selling some surplus to cover cost and I want it to be efficient, so it's not taking me eight hours a day to run. I, I focus on one hour a day, go out to the farm one hour a day, and it produces an abundant amount of food and um, yeah, fruit, veg, um, meat and such. Self-sufficient, I want the farm to abundantly produce a surplus of food, water and energy, so my family and I are self-sufficient in those three things. The motivation for doing this um, if ever I've done coaching with you, I often talk about sort of mental health and what's your motivation? Is it just money? Is it whatever? Like, why am I doing this? Of like trying to build a self-sufficient farm that's cost neutral. It's fun. I'm doing it for fun. I'm not doing it because I'm afraid of a food shortage or I'm afraid of this or I'm not doing it out of fear whatsoever. This is just going to be fun. Um, I sort of do it from time to time of like, but uh, this is more like, right, let's really get focused. And the second part of it, why am I filming it? Because I can go do it and I sort of have done. Like I looked at last, I think it was last financial year or last 12 months, I forget. Um, I made $1,500 just with my rabbits. I've got a few rabbits out there in one of those coops. You can probably just see out there somewhere. Um, $1,500 in a year just with rabbits. So I already do this, but I don't really document it and share it as well as I could. So um, why am I filming this? is to entertain, so I want it to sort of be funny. I don't want this to be the most boring webinar series you've ever gone to. I want it to be a bit entertaining and I want it to be inspirational. That's one thing, whenever I do a farm open day here on farm, one of my main focuses is I want people to drive out the driveway at the end of a tour and they be inspired. They go, yeah, I wanna go do something. I wanna get involved somehow uh, to take the next step. And I want to share knowledge. I've got some knowledge. I've done sort of this farming, agricultural, growing food thing for um, well over 10 years, probably very actively for 11 years now. But even before that, like I've got pictures of myself as, as a teenager growing some corn or growing something. So um, I've been doing this for a little bit, bit of time now and I've got some knowledge. So yeah, that would be really cool to share. Hopefully I can inspire you and entertain you and I'm gonna have a bunch of fun. So on that, let's go outside. Okay, so I'm out outside here. Um, hopefully the wind's not too bad, but that's going to be part of this project surplus where you can just come out into the paddock with me and we might have to battle the wind and we might have to hold an umbrella and battle the rain sometimes, but that's that. 
First thing, I better point out really early on, like about right now, I'm no longer a vegan. I was a vegan years ago. I tried veganism and it was, um, it was good. Um, right now, I'm not a vegan. Um, so part of this project surplus, I'm going to be eating meat. I'm going to process meat. I'm going to butcher meat. I'm going to slaughter an animal that is made up of meat. So if you're a vegan, a vegetarian, or you don't like the idea of a furry animal being turned into meat, there's probably some music videos you could go watch now on YouTube. So on that, talking about furry, fluffy, cute animals that we turn to meat, I'm gonna show you some of my meat rabbits. They're rabbits that are made out of meat. Hello. Hello. So this little rabbit, this little rabbit is a meat rabbit. It's a New Zealand white cross Californian. It's not a straight cross, it's like, its parents were crosses and I just, I don't know, I'm probably on the fourth generation of these rabbits. They're very friendly, you just pick them up. Um, I don't know if you can get a gauge of the size of this. I don't really know the weight, maybe I should get some scale sometime. This would have been born about the first, first of June. And it's about, I don't even know what date it is in July. Anyway, it's probably about five or six weeks old and it's already a good size. So I do some meat rabbits and um, we've got a few of these. So these are, this is just a bit of a snapshot of what you're gonna see on Project Surplus over the next period of time. So rabbits and how I do rabbits, how I move rabbits, what I feed rabbits, how I butcher rabbits, how I cut up rabbits and even potentially how I cook rabbits is gonna be covered on Project Surplus. <coughs> So this farm that I'm on, uh, we've been on it for a bit over 12 months. It might be 14 or 15 months. So you're not gonna see sort of a 30 year old food forest that, that's had like um, 27,000 hours of work that's gone into it. What you're seeing right now and over these next few months, uh, we only started this um, farm uh, 15 months ago. And I, to give you a little bit of context of what we do here on farm, uh, um, so part of Chicken Caravan, Chicken Caravan head off is here on the farm and out in the paddock we we do a mixture of um, just growing food for ourselves and that and we do a mixture of research and development projects in the area of regenerative agriculture sorry if that's too long for you we work to find out what works to make farming easier and more efficient there you go so one of the things we've got here this is an, an e-coop layer 60 it's one of the products that we sell in Australia and um, with what we've got around it it's not really a secret now because if you've come to one of my field days you would have actually come and seen this this is a moving paddock and hopefully later this year we'll have developed this a bit more so when we move this coop forward the whole paddock and fences move around it so I'm gonna be showing you when I say like I want automation and efficiency what I was just saying a couple of minutes ago these are some of the things that we actually do. It's not just go, we want automation and efficiency. And then we go out there and work for eight hours and just like have stupid systems. And if we do work out there for eight hours and have stupid systems, we normally come back in and say, how do we make this better and more efficient and more user friendly? So in here are some, some laying hens. Most of them are Australorps. I do have a few eyes of browns in there. I don't really want them anymore. So I will be selling them off. Um, just so everything on the farm is Australorps, so if I ever put fertile eggs in an incubator, which you will see, incubating eggs over this next six months, they're all going to be Australorps. So this is the Ecoop Layer 60. Th those things there, they're guinea fowl. See those things? That's as, my new camera, that's as good as the zoom gets. They're guinea fowl. Um, oh. Gee, I don't know what to say. I don't really know much about guinea fowl. This is the first time I've had guinea fowl. Um, why do I have guinea fowl? I heard they just, they roam around your paddocks. They sort of really are free range. Um, they sort of perch in the tree or on top of a, a hen house or something. They'll eat the leftover feed that could be left behind by other animals. And they eat like a crazy number of ticks. If you know how many ticks each guinea fowl can eat, put in the comments. 
Might be like 100 ticks a day. It could be 400 ticks a day. It's crazy. So if you've got like sheep or cattle or even a dog, something that could be affected by a tick, these things, they, I don't know, they must have little good eyesight. I was trying to think of some efficient word to say good eyesight, like microscopes in their eyes, because ticks are tiny and they can just walk through the grass and bang, 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 bang. And they make noise. I don't really know much more about them. I think they lay like 20 or 30 eggs a year, so they're certainly not for egg production. Um, I haven't eaten one yet. Um, I don't plan to in the next six months, but who knows? You could see me um, processing and eating and doing something with a guinea fowl. Guinea fowl also here on the farm. So up the center of this paddock running due north-south are some trees. Now these are eu eucalyptus trees. Um, and some native fig trees. I forget all the types of them. I know there's some white mahogany white mahogany eucalyptus trees because I heard that um, they're termite resistant and that was probably all I read. I'm like, that sounds like a good tree. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to tree planting. I just know the best time to plant a tree uh, is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So I planted these um, about June, about July last year, so about a year ago, I planted these trees. I'm putting um, palm tree branches that fall off. We've got palm trees here. I'm just putting them down as mulch. Basically, what I'm going to create here is a syntropic row. Now, for 99.3% of people that are watching, I said syntropics. Don't worry, a year ago I'd never heard of syntropics, but basically, in my opinion, I'm sure that all the syntropic experts will, experts will say, no, that's not true. It's a food forest, but rather than being a food jungle, it's a food forest in lines. So I can just go and I can pick um, whatever, whatever, uh, fruit or food or berry or nut or whatever but it's not going to be all avocados or all blueberry or all something it'll be a mix so it'll be a forest but it's done in rows so it's very efficient to harvest i'm still learning about it but you will see more about syntropics uh, here on the farm and yeah you'll see a bit about um, tree planting these trees tree guards come from tree planting systems australia i hope i said it right nick anyway you can google them they're really good they're about five or six or seven bucks each i think about five bucks each we planted out trees i didn't look i lost one tree um but it was i, I um i let the sheep when I, I i put the sheep around i'm like i don't think sheep eat eucalyptus but i don't know if they ate it they sort of um broke it or something but these tree guards i haven't lost a tree other than that that one where I sort of let the sheep in which was my fault so uh, I find, find them really good and they're not straight up and down they're sort of at an angle so the branches can grow out more so you're going to learn about syntropics and probably growing some things uh, towards the end of the row maybe I can zoom there we've got green things there we go oh it's going to focus on my finger that's not going to be real good there we go um, is going to be those green things are banagrass so they're growing in the Syntropics row, and I found out from the Syntropics expert, don't grow it, don't grow banagrass in the Syntropics row. So we're gonna dig that out. So as part of this process, project, project surplus, you're also gonna see a few mistakes to say, oops, we did that, that was dumb. Um, but that's just part of the journey. Let's keep moving. I've got pigs on the farm, and we're gonna see the pigs soon. But one of the things I wanna talk about is I love getting the animals to do the work. I look at the animal and go, what are you good at? It's like, the, like a bit of an interview. Welcome to the farm, what are you good at? Pigs, they're good at digging up things. And um, so I use that to the advantage. And that's actually why I wanted pigs. Everyone's like, oh, so you're after the bacon. I'm like, I just sort of want the pigs to sort of dig up a bit and improve the ground. And then I worked out, um, so in summertime I grow uh, corn and sunflower and you're going to see as I plant that out in probably September or October and across this bank here way down there I had quite a bit of sunflower and you will see on huge chicken caravan YouTube channel um, where I grew sunflower and then I let the pigs in under that sunflower to harvest themselves so in summertime I do corn and sunflower in winter, I'm like, what else can I do? And I read about core, um, sorry, wheat. I don't know heaps about wheat. 
but I'm learning about wheat and one of the things I did and I have been doing I've been feeding wheat to the pigs as a percentage of their diet they eat the wheat some of the wheat they don't eat they trample into the ground some of the wheat they poo out and it's whole grain wheat and the wheat grows so that green circle as you can see down there I'll probably focus on my finger again that's actually where the pigs have been and all that green patch that's wheat so this is one thing I'm doing to grow my own food uh, I, I don't want to um, have a huge feed bill of everything I buy in so I'm going how can I grow a percentage of the feed here on farm you'll see more about that over the next few months these are the pigs here that black thing running over the back that's not a pig that is a kelpie dog um, and just a bit of a warning through my video sometimes I go hey dog and I just refer to it as dog and I had a friend over and I'll put them on the on the buggy I'll give them a tour around the farm and go hey dog come here dog and she turned to me and she said um, is is that its name or oh, what the dog you just call it dog and I'm like no the dog's name Shelly I was unconscious of I just call it dog um, so yeah we only have one dog so it's quite easy these are the pigs they are behind electric pig fencing very great and very easy to use so you can just move them around and sell graze them so um, they've only been in there this morning but they will sort of um, chew that down and sort of uh, dig it up a bit and make it ready to plant out something so here are the the pigs the dog as I say the dog I should say Shelly the dog loves to sort of run up and down the fence and the pigs don't really care about her and she's like oh yeah let's 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 chase and play and run and all that sort of stuff so uh, these pigs I think I've got 11 pigs there's a few males in there which I'll probably be butchering over the next few weeks um, I did butcher one a couple of weeks ago so I should have a video coming out about that about butchering pigs I'm still new to slaughtering and butchering, butchering pigs but you will see me as I get better at this and I'm also learning uh, sorry some friends are going to be teaching me how to um, make my own bacon and I've got a smoker so I've been uh, making some smoked pork but bacon there's a little bit more of a process to that so hopefully I can show you how to grow pigs and also make your own bacon bacon's awesome we make our own compost here on the farm uh, that's my dad on the tractor um, he just loves being on the tractor that's just what he does when he's outside it's just a lot of fun and um, with compost I'm still learning what I'm doing um, I have some level of success because I pile up a big amount of um, wood chip or manure or whatever and it steams and get hot, gets hot and that's one of the things with actual composting that things are getting heat into them so they're killing off like seeds and uh, like weed seeds and bad things so um, that's the compost being turned this compost here is mainly um, horse manure so um, dad's not sure what he's doing he's just turning it and mixing it and doing his thing so I, I normally get all the compost uh, all the materials in a pile and then he, he'll pile it up and turn it and do that so yeah it's one thing we're doing here on farm I've got a lot more to learn about it I bought myself a thermometer so we'll be able to test and see how hot it gets inside that compost heat <laughs> sheep I've got two sheep um, I got the sheep September last year and I think they're Dorpa, Dorpa, no Dorpa Cross, Dorpa Cross Wilty Pole or something. Again, I don't know heaps about sheep. Um, the reason I've got sheep is one, to learn a little bit about sheep. Um, we're, we're the importers and we sell this electric sheep fencing, which is all portable. You'll come to realize everything on my farm is portable. Um, it's just easier so I don't have to maintain fence lines or sheds or have rodent issues uh, everything's moving um, so we, we've got sheep I'm learning about sheep and I just love diversity that's one thing I've learned in my sort of um, farming um, journey diversity if I just have just ducks on the farm or just avocado trees or just one thing I can have issues by creating diversity like you'd see in a forest like I love hiking hiking in forests and that there's just so much diversity there's little trees right next to a big tree right next to a fern which is it's just so much diversity and they're things I try and take away and go right how do I create that on on the farm 
because the forests are places that are normally thriving they don't really have like drought issues and whatever so I've got sheep just to create where are they create diversity I've only got two I plan on getting a few more because it'll make it'll make the videos better um, rather than just having two sheep because think about it if I butcher one sheep I've just like got rid of 50% of my sheep so uh, it'll be cool and and hopefully I've got a male and a female so hopefully that female is pregnant so between now and Christmas hopefully we'll see little baby lambs everyone go lamb woohoo behind me is a dam well sorry behind me is a pond in Australia we call it a dam I've come to realize after connecting with people that um, from other countries outside Australia um, that's a pond a dam is actually a wall that holds back water like a dam wall um, yeah I've, I've sort of had um, confusing conversations with I think it was an Irishman it's like there's the dam he's like where's the dam I'm like there's the dam he goes no where's the actual dam and I'm like didn't know what he was talking about a wall that's a pond um, just letting you know we've got this pond it's a really good sized pond um, it's probably like 40 meters across or something it ke keeps going keeps going there's the end of it and um, I'm trying to work out a way to efficiently pump some water from that to wet down my compost heaps uh, I'm on the east coast of Australia right at the moment I don't have a water issue because it seems like I am exaggerating but it seems like every third week we get sort of a, a minor flood almost like just a deluge of water that falls out of the sky um, but that might not always happen so I might be setting up a solar pump or I'm still working that out how to efficiently get the water from there maybe up to a tank up high so I can gravity feed it or maybe I'll just use a solar pump I'm not sure yet but anyway we've got a pond I'll probably be calling it a dam just saying this here is an e-coop grower side note e-coop stands for everything it's an everything coop because it's built on a modular system so this is um, a, an e-coop grower doesn't have any nesting boxes just feeders uh, the sheep are in an e-coop which is set up for sheep the pigs are in an e-coop set up for pigs and the first one I showed you the e-coop layer 60 is set up for 60 laying hens so that's why they call an e-coop in case you go is it electronic is it eco it's sort of everything that's just the name we created a few years back so this is an e-coop grower all it me means it's got feeders and drinkers um, so it doesn't have any nesting boxes so I've got young chicks in there it's got an open floor I move it along and they're just in there to grow so they get access to fresh grass one thing I will be doing and now that I've said on video I'm committed to it I'll be brooding some chickens in there so that's one thing I like about it I can get the chickens at day old put some sawdust in there and grow them in the e coop grower when they're old enough I just start moving it forward and then we can get the tractor just to scoop up that sawdust and um, make it into compost so we're not in there with a shovel trying to shovel it out mobile infrastructure one of the keys to efficient farming and finally I want to show you our veggie garden um, so this veggie garden it'll end up being uh, 20 meters wide by 36 meters long we've got a few things planted in it the veggie garden is is not a hundred percent my project it's a bit of a, a family and friends affair and and that's one thing I want to talk about um, in project surplus about having community some people they don't have land um, so they want land other people have land but they don't have the labor how can you work with your local friends and family and community to sort of all produce food so this is the veggie garden you can see at the back there I've got some black plastic down that's actually helping just uh, kill off some of the grass so when we um, want to extend the garden bed we don't have to deal with grass we've got some wicking beds that um, my brother and sister-in-law have um, have been experimenting with I'm still learning about that 
so I actually like the garden because I like fresh produce but it, because it's a mixture of um, quite a few people we're seeing different styles and things that I'd never grow because it doesn't quite interest me other people go hey I'd really love to grow that so we're still mapping it out the veggie garden uh, this particular garden it's on um, a bed of wood chip mulch which is probably about 30 centimeters tall so hopefully it'll have very good drainage um, and you'll see this expand um, this sort of view doesn't really give it much justice I almost need like a drone shot that's what I need I need to get a drone this is me justifying buying a drone so you can see the veggie garden up there is a chicken caravan 30 and that's at the very end of the veggie garden so that'll be like the third bay because we've got bays which are about 10 meters by um, 20 meters and we've got um, like driveways or roadways in between the last bay that'll sort of be the jungle bay that's where we plant the pumpkins and the watermelons and the things that just grow big and sort of take over so we don't have sort of pumpkins sort of like um, strangling our lettuce and beans and the our parsley the thing things that we're harvesting all the time so anyway that's just a bit of a snapshot of what is project um, surplus and uh, and just showing you where things are up to on the farm I've probably got a few other things I could show you on the farm of like we've got some banana trees we've been putting in and some citrus trees but they're things you'll see over the next few months so hopefully you'll follow me project awesome on Facebook on YouTube and might be on somewhere else but we'll see I'm Daniel O'Brien talk soon here at chicken caravan we obviously make caravans for chickens this one here holds 10 chickens and this one here holds 600 chickens our vision is to see the world farming sustainably and to do that we want to continually develop sustainable farming systems that can be duplicated worldwide since we built our first chicken caravan back in 2010 our chicken caravan products have now been exported to over 20 countries around the world although chickens are our main focus we also have development projects with sheep pigs and rabbits to find out more about the chicken caravan company please go to chickencaravan.com